in mixing it in should i say with an oriana that is a very strong team fighting composition you can throw the ball on lee sin you can throw the ball onto the nar just get in do all of the damage and then have jinx be able to clean everything up because you have kind of the wombo combo but wombo combo as riot scars are tweeted earlier is it's kind of getting misconstrued if people believe that oh because you can chain cc that's a wombo combo no a wombo combo is a lot of damage focused in one area this has the option to be a lot of damage but the chain cc that the oriana shockwave as well as the nar into the wall can create that groups everyone together for the jinx rockets to just blow people out of the water so i really like the team composition that they're building they're actually holding off the last pick for Tesla Craig, but as we all know, the Thresh is more than likely going to be what's coming out. If he doesn't pick Thresh, I'll gift everybody in the chat right now a mystery skin. Oh, don't tell him. He might be listening, and he'll <laughs> just go Nautilus just to He's break like, your bank. He's like, guys, no, just pick Bard or like Nautilus, somebody else with a stun on Q. I'm going to be very, very broke if he doesn't pick Thresh in this situation. But a lot of damage coming out of the blue side on behalf of Team BM with the Tristana doing the AoE with the explosive charge, in addition to the AoE slow that Braum can offer. In addition to the knockup, the Yasuo combination is there. Five-man knockup, five-man last breath equals five-man ace, hopefully. There's a question mark in between there. You're right, but looking at what they have, they only have the wind wall, or sorry, not the wind wall, the tornado from the Yasuo. <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah, he's hovering over it. He's listening to this right now. But you only have the tornado as well as the ultimate from the Braum to really help out this Yasuo pick. So if he's actually wanting to get in there and do all this damage, then there is a big chance that he might not actually, you know, land these. Because when you have a team that's built around a Yasuo and you have all these knockups to decide which one you want to go off of is very important. But at the same time, if you look around and you're the, one of the only ways to enable your ultimate, then that can be a very sticky situation because if they focus you down early or if they get in a rough situation, it might happen. But flipping it back around, the Thresh comes out we uh we weren't we weren't not expecting that i, I save all. a lot of money there you did you and did it fits indeed. in so well here with the immobile jinx getting the lantern and the hooks and all the different types of peel that thresh can offer to keep this jinx safe and you think about it oriana also pretty immobile as well but the wombo is there on behalf of both teams incredible burst coming out of blazing memers in addition to the wombo potential of ragnar's victims but man, these coaches and these staff members are gonna go hard at each other. Everybody works with each other on a pretty intimate level. So knowing what each other plays, knowing each other's like coaching style, in turn their play style, it's gonna be really interesting to see how this pans out, whether they go for like early cheeses or they decide to just go, you know what? We're gonna play as solid League of Legends as possible. Solid League of Legends is indeed happening. We're getting to our delay pretty soon. So we... We have a couple things to wrap up on. Looking at the team compositions, they're very different. Both of them have the strong team fighting potential. But a lot of this early aggression that Lee Sin can pull is what I want to look for coming into this. Because Echo, yes, has a lot of mobility and can move around the map early. But unless he play, plays a perfect parallel convergence, then Lee Sin is going to be able to dominate a lot of this early jungle. So this early jungle pressure and these early jungle paths are something that we need to look for as we head into this game. Right, so can Storations find perfection in this parallel convergences? There's a lot of P's in that sentence. Or will, oh my god, put that Lee Sin kit to use in the early game and shut them down early on. But we are getting into our spectator delay. You are watching the Learning 5 show match. The first one of the fall session brought to you by Summoner School Events Productions. In about three minutes, we'll be right back. Enjoy the music on the way out. We'll see you on the Rift.
And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first game between Team BM and Team RV. Remember, this is a best of two series to give the teams a chance to react to what the other team did in the previous game and come back with a chance for vengeance. On the blue side this time, we have Blazing Memes. North Quab in the top lane, Storacious in the jungle, Fizz Don Her Jace in mid, Ward Ultra Titan 96 on ADC, and Meister Voisu on support. And for Rignar's victims, we've got Rignar in the top lane leading his team to victory. Oh my god, on Lee Sin in the jungle, Revel is on Orion in the mid lane, and for the bot lane duo, Sixili on and Tesla Craig on Jinx and Thresh respectively. Already, look at these invades. We've got one coming around from one side, we've got one coming into the other. <laughs> Spamming the level 5 master emotes. This is top competitive play at its highest. Yeah, we saw a lot of level 5 masteries in the loading screen. I think on behalf of Team RV, Revelize was the only one that didn't have level 5 on Orianna. So obviously if they lose, it's all Revelize's fault. But that definitely shows these guys will know exactly what limits their champion has. They know exactly how to push their damage edges, exactly where their champion can and cannot be. And that just opens up the opportunity for better macro play. So this early pressure that we're seeing right here come, coming out of Ringnar's victims, I enjoy this a lot because it's really getting a good start on things. Storages and Oh My God both are going to want to know where the other is starting early because if you see exactly what the other lane is doing they're instituting this lane swap right here so getting this early vision ensuring that no matter what you're going to do we're going to find a way to counteract this is going to be good you've got the double jungle start from north quab and storacious the double jungle start from rignar and oh my god and already we're seeing something that we weren't necessarily expecting coming into this learning five show match I mean, they want to short shut down North Pop early on and make sure that Sixily gets to that two item breakpoint that Jinx is very terrifying at. Getting that lane swap to make sure that not too many shenanigans go down in laning phase before they get a chance to get to that scaling point. We'll see if that ends up paying up for them. The jungle, double, jungle, double jungle, double, double, double jungle has proceeded. Everybody making sure to share XP to the top laners. But it looks like Meister Voisu coming over at an interesting time. Actually going to reset the blue buff. That might set them behind pretty early on. This is a really good strategy that Meister Voisu pulls out of here. They knew, again, they got the early vision. They were able to figure out exactly where they went. So now he's able to contest what this goes on. So that means that Rignar is not going to be able to get the level 2. He's going to show up to lane a little bit farther behind. North Quab, in the meanwhile, was able to buy a full stack of potions. He's going to get in the lane before that gets pushed to tower. So he's going to be able to soak up a lot of XP. And this is just already a really good start for Blazing Memers right here because they're going to have the XP advantage. When you run the kind of 2v1 situation that RV is running, it's a lot of denial. It's a lot of keeping the mid, sorry, sorry, me, keeping the top laner out of a lot of XP. But they did it wrong. They weren't able to manage the wave correctly. That allowed North Pop to get in here. The beautiful up in by Meister. Boisu made it where the level 2 couldn't hit on Ringnar. And this is, again, a very strong advantage by North Pop and the rest of Blaze Mimirs to get things started. I wonder how this is going to pan out for the junglers taking their pass throughout the early game. Oh my god, still working on that blue buff. So a lot of that early game pressure, when those windows of opportunity are like 10, 20 seconds long, being behind by like a full minute and a half. This thing is crazy, and we see right here, Storace just taking advantage of that by going in on Revelize early on. Yeah, the early pressure that he's trying to provide is necessary for what they're doing. If you look at another pressure alleviation that you see, they actually let Lord Ultra Titan sit in the bottom by himself. He's 1v1-ing against now right now. Two ranged characters, they obviously have the potential to do so. But with Meister Voice, look at this, they're already showing some a lot of aggression right here. They might have a chance to get this. Yeah, Craig gets stunned up, but the passive is still on cooldown. Sixily gets a great jump. Oh, they might turn this around! Tesla Craig showing the Thresh mastery! The exhaust comes down. Can this be a two-piece early on? Shut down the Yasuo, flashed into the bush, chasing him down come on chase him chase him chase him somebody kill somebody north Quab. one more auto does it rv goes up 2-0 early on 
A little bit of overzealousness right there by Meister Voice. So he he went in, he was able to get the stun, but then a beautiful reply hook right there by Tesla Craig to finish things off. He was able to pick up the kill, and then it was just a matter of time. Yasuo can only jump to minions for so long. Was able to pick up. That's two kills right now on Jinx. She's got enough gold. She's going to be able to go back, get her BF sword, and then it's just going to be even more damage from there. When you look at the team composition and the team fighting prowess that you have on the side of RV, the faster you get them... Excuse me. The faster that you get them ramped up, the easier their late game is going to be. So that's exactly what they want. They want to be able to get ahead early. They want to be able to push this advantage. That's exactly what they're doing. But Blazing Memers is looking to combat right here. Suresh is coming in. Yeah, Revelize really low on mana, but they don't get anything quite down. They go in deep for it. Do they have the damage to follow this up on Fizz on her Jade's completely oom? No laser to shred the Oriana, and she makes it out alive and with both summoners intact. Both summoners were left intact. That's exactly what Revelize is wanting. Victor is doing a really good job at pushing this lane up, but Revelize is doing an even better job at maintaining that safe distance. As an Oriana, you have to make sure that this happens. You have to be able to, again, like I said earlier, keep this ever or sorry, ever forward progressive movement with your team composition. And by doing that, by maintaining the safe movements, by maintaining the safe mentality, that's going to allow you to push forward in this. How often do you see a Jinx with a, with a five minute BF sword? The whole nah. difference between the ADCs right now, sitting at about six, seven hundred? It's big, it's huge right now, but if you kind of want to, I guess, reel it back in a little bit, there is a really good job by Lord Ultra Titan to keep things... I'm going to get tired of saying that name by the end of it. Um, by a, keeping up the farm, it, maintaining that even CS. But they know that the top lane kind of 2v2 that they wanted to create is ultimately Wait, gone right now. Meister Voisu had it, but you're right. Here we go. Serratius, he's spamming it in. The Blazy Memers, they, the memes have to start. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. In a runaway. Revelize gets spotted by the ward though. Oh. A little bit suspicious. About North Quad over here, but North Quad from the top lane gets locked down under tower again. Lane swap not going quite as well for this guy. How did she land that zap in the middle? Tesla Craig getting jumped on the wow. tower shot does it. The outplay. That was an unfortunate situation, but it looks like it's actually going to get removed with some aggressive right here in this bot lane. Yeah, Meister Boys who dodges out the queue went a little bit wide there, but can they turn this around? Oisu getting pretty low there. They're gonna jump in. The explosive charge so close to getting the kill on there. But Ragnar, the Narbar is on cooldown. Does the Q line? No, it doesn't. So everybody making it out with just a little bit of health. No more blood to be spilled there. You know, when we invited them for this show match, it was a lot of banter and a lot of back and forth play on things. But, you know, if you look at exactly what they're doing, they're kind of not kind of they're not in the slightest letting anything up every single one of these fights are going down to the wire people are surviving with less than 100 less than 200 health right now but if you want to talk about surviving it doesn't look like anything's going to be a survive oh Ooh, thresh, thresh comes right there north Quab playing the cinch game in between the towers Not really to rotate up just yet oriana's pinging the mia north Quab doing the 2v1 dance right now also doing a lot of damage but oh 3-0 Jinx. 3-0 <laughs> and o Jinx right now. You know, if there's anyone you don't want to get fed, it's going to be a Jinx when the other members on your team have every ability in the world to help peel for her. She's 3-0. and zero. She's doing an amazing job at making sure everything that she does hits her targets. Tessel missed a couple skill shots, but it didn't necessarily matter. He was able to zone out Northquab, was able to get everything going. Northquab is in a difficult situation. He doesn't have enough gold to get the Avaris Blade, so he's going to be falling behind even further. If you want to look at how the difference between the 80 carries are, there's roughly a 1k difference right now, and that's not what you want to see at 9 minutes into the game. Oh my god, clearing a ward out. He might try to do something with the come around. Fizz on her Jace, though, is going to recognize that, is going to back it off. Some really good vision control for this line of scrimmage that we're seeing. If you look at what Meister Voisu is doing, he's roaming around a lot, but a lot of his movements are getting spotted out by some really good wars by the rest of uh, the rest of Ringnar's victims. And so this is a really good job by them to get things going, to have some vision, to create some direction for the first year of this game. He's finally making its way back up after getting a deep ward down on the enemy right side. 
Lord Ultra Titan gonna be joined by his support very early on, but ooh! Correct finds he hooked onto the opposite one. Barely misses the flame choppers though. They're gonna exchange a little bit of actual. <laughs> Bro, I didn't tell you to take the lantern, I just wanted to give you the shield. Northpaw going in for the blue buff steel, manages to get it, and oh my god, oh my god! Storatius gets the kill on the opposite jungler. Meanwhile, in the top lane, everybody starts fighting. Zig Zilly onto the support, the support onto the ADC. Everybody switching roles here. Tesla Craig very low on mana, getting lower on health, but the, oh, the super mega death rocket finds it's not the over target, yet. and it's not over yet. Ragnar in the middle of there, taking so much damage with the command protect, finds its target just in time. Jinx, 4-0 and 0 in the first 10 minutes. Is this a snowball or what? I don't know what it is, but what it is is it's going to be a, a hoarse voice for you before we even get finished with this broadcast. There are fights all over the map right now. You look at the division from both teams. It's just they want to be able to fight. They want to be able to tango. Dragon is going to go down. There's nothing that Oh My God can do. He gets spotted out on the top side, so they finish the dragon off. First dragon is going to go down in favor. And even though this Jinx is pretty much fed, they're only down about 1,000 gold. That's not too much in this early game. We're about 11 minutes in right here. And... This is going to come down to how can they protect Jinx in team fights. You have a lot of tools to be able to do so, but if Northquav is able to jump around and do what he does best, then once he gets another couple items, once he finishes the Static Shiv as well as the Triforce, then it's going to be disaster for Jinx. So they need to make sure that everything that they do coming into this mid game, coming into these team fights, protect, protect, protect. Definitely wanting to protect that 1,700 gold lead that they have on Six Elite. That's and so IE being finished before the 12 minute mark at this game, and especially in a game where all the coaches are pretty familiar with each other's playstyles, they know what each other play, they know the different philosophies they have about League of Legends. So this achievement, going this, getting this fed this early on, I mean, I think it increases in value considering the, uh, the context of this match. You're right. There's a lot of adjustments that you can make. There's a lot of things you can do. But look at this. Look. Oh my god, just keeps getting caught out right now. He's not in the right spot. Oh, He's up with the shockwave, lands on three. Not a lot of AP behind it though. Northwell goes in deep. Chills getting traded left and right. Six only picks up yet another one. How many kills do you want to give over to this Jinx? Northwell, the tornado finds his target. The flight spill it up. It looks like that's going to be it for them. But a couple of chills being traded back and forth. As it looks like Team Blue comes out behind. Ahead, rather. Yeah, they come out ahead. They actually end up coming out 200 gold ahead for the total team gold. They're also going to be able to do a nice four-man push. They're going to get this turret right here. There's nothing really that Sixly and Tesla can do in the bot lane. They're going to try to push up. But look, Storatius is already headed towards the bottom to try to do that. That's going to be a null and void attempt for them. Ringnar is trying his best to try to catch up. He's down about 20 CS as well as kills and assists right there to North Pop. So he needs to get himself back into this game. He's rushing the Black Cleaver, so you know that he's going to be able to do a lot of damage. But if you look at the way that these other games, or sorry, these other champions are building, he's going to have to get some tanky stats early because, again, it's they need to protect the Jinx. She's 5-0-0. Zero, zero. That is very strong, and it's not a rocket that you're going to want to take to the face at all. Not a lot of things I like taking to the face. Maybe food. Just not just not a 20, 20 hamburger patties though. <laughs> References. Are Neither is a hook. And that's not something you want to do either. Six only going dominating in the first 13 and a half minutes. So what did you say about this Jinx? Not they don't want her to get fed. No, they don't, and she is, and now it's not too late, but it's too late for the mid game because it's horrible. This doesn't rule everything out though. You know, Jinx gets fed, Jinx has a good time, that's great, but there's a lot of tools that Blazing Memers have at their disposal to be able to get a hold of her. You've got Storacious, if he hits a good parallel convergence, oh, but it doesn't even matter. It looks like Voice is gonna get taken down really quickly here. Yeah, Chessel's generating a lot of great picks here, but Voice barely gets out alive. The Shockwave lands on a couple. Can RV turn this around? BM so low, Sixily going godlike. Everybody on RV going super, super low as Fizz chasing him down. Ooh, the flash for Wild Turtle style, but it doesn't find the kill just yet. Lots of members on RV low, but this mid tower gonna be icing on the cake. Not gonna be able to get the kill for the play, but you're gonna be able to push up. North Quab is lurking. Last Breath is not available, so it's not gonna be an object for that, but it doesn't look like he cares. 
He doesn't look like he cares. He has the tornado. Ragnar, oh, jukes it out. Rex hits him with the face and the hook and they turn this around. They trade one back and forth. Jinx, however, goes legendary in the first 15 minutes. As they pick up kills, they keep handing them over to Jinx. This is scary. She has 2,200 gold in her pocket right now. She's going to be able to go back and buy an immense amount of attack speed so she can kite around, she can move around, and these rockets that are coming out, they are not going to be in Tristana's pockets. They're going to be sitting on her face because she is going to be having a very difficult time if they don't find some way to shut this Jinx down. And then again, they do have the tools to do it once they get that goal to back up the kits that their champions come with. Could be a very different story in these team fights. Right now, North Club doesn't quite have the damage to burst down or chunk down people with these tornadoes and these last breaths. But once he gets a few more crit items and builds the AD that he needs to, Sixily can be in a world of hurt if he gets knocked up by either Braum or North Club. One now, tornado. That's it. That's, that's all it takes. That's all that it's going to take to take them down. So it's going to rely on not necessarily the Jinx as much as it's going to rely on her team to keep her safe. As an AD carry, obviously you want to stay in the back. You want to maintain your distance. But when it comes down to it, it's going to be up to your team to be able to protect you. They have every tool necessary. But again, one bad tornado, one misposition by Jinx. She goes down, she dies, and their entire team collapses. Eight out of eight kills are on top of this Jinx. So it's going to come down oh. to if they're able to do it. Oh, she misses the super mega death rocket. But again, that's all it's going to take. One bad misposition and their team is going to fall apart. All of their gold, all of their resources are being pumped into the Jinx right now. And it's, it's going to rely on their ability to protect her to keep themselves relevant. Right, think about the, all the eggs in one basket. All the eggs going into the Echo basket, though. He's completely out of mana. Oh my god, with the energy recharging, they're onto him. Everybody else looking for an avenue into the fight. Oh, the gravity field zones them out, and Echo barely makes it out alive. Ringnar still chasing. They want it, but it looks like BM going to slide right on out of there. But RV, that's exactly what they wanted. While they didn't pick up kills, Dragon's up in five. There's nobody around to contest. Can't complain when you have a situation like that. Lee Sin is going to be forced to come back as well. So that's two junglers out of, out of the mix. But with your ability to not only take this turret down as well as force members away, that's going to allow the rest of your team to secure the vision control that they need. They get the vision control above Dragon. They're able to pink it out. Lee Sin is trying his best. He's got mobility boots. He's running, running, running. But here comes the Dragon. Here comes the Contest. They're starting it without him. No smite versus no smite right now. We'll say they're going to try and pull it out as much as they can. Lee Sin slowly making his way over there. Dragon getting shredded by this Jinx with a zeal and Berserker's Grief already. Into this time, Meister Voice Suit tries to get something with the winner's bite, but the Dragon does go over to RV. Meanwhile, the mid lane solo split push Tristana. Looking That's to make a rotation here, but I think RV should get this. They're gonna have it. Meganar's coming out of the old. Oh, Meganar gets the wall. Can they have the follow up? And then one Orchard dies in the ADC gets jumped on. Revelize the shockwave lands on two. Do they have the follow up damage? But Jinx and Thresh on the other side of the fight chasing them down. Tesla picks up one over there. Oh my god, going super low. Storacious face dives under the turret for a kill. God, the kills are scattered all over the place. I don't know who to keep an eye on right now. Tesla Greg KSing left and right, but Sixily finds another one to add to her gun. That was an unfortunate mispositioning right there by everyone on the side of Blazing Memers. They they had a good thought. Like, the thought was there. You can't complain against that. But what resulted in that disaster was the beautiful rotations that you see coming out of Ringnar's victims. They moved around the second they took that dragon. They recognized exactly where they were. They had enough vision to predict that. They were able to cave around. A beautiful flash Nar came out of Ringnar. And after there, it was just a disaster. Oh my God's gonna try to clear this out to try to help alleviate a little bit of pressure. But still, the damage and the hurt is being put on right now. This is such a strong showing by them. North Quab. Oh, oh, look at that. When you're this far behind. No Sonic Wave available, so no Lee Sin to come chasing you. My body's telling me no. My mind's... No, wait. It's the other way around. I, they tell you it just depends on what time of the night it is. They both go. But, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my dead. 
mid tier turret, second tier turret in the mid lane is gonna go down. All is not lost yet, even though they have a very fed Jinx on the side. Only 7 to 12, only up about 2, about 1.6k gold. That's not the end of the world. That's not the worst situation you can be in. We can think of some much more bad situations, but getting caught out like this is not a place you want to be. 3, Ooh, 1, the and max 10. Rate dead sentence! Sixily tries to pick up that one, but Tesla Craig now offering a shutdown bounty. Not sure exactly when he died, but having the Zeke's Herald on top of that makes his... Makes his abilities hurt a little bit more, in addition to just the crazy amount of burst that when it procs, Sixily's gonna be able to pump out. Hey, who said that Zeke's Herald is only for the AD carry? That little bit of extra AP was enough to just right. completely burst down everything that Mr. Voice would do. Hook's gonna miss, Hook's gonna go off. That way, Dragon spawning at 20 minutes. They took the scuttle, they're starting to secure back Dragon, sorry, Baron control. Are they actually wanting to go for a Baron this early? Could this actually happen? I mean, the back timings are a little interesting. Everybody making their way. Everybody on BM, rather, making their way over to the Baron Pit. But it looks like the split push mid, or this team push mid, rather, is going to draw all of their attention. North Club going to go for that Triforce to try and put a lot more burst damage down with the Sheen procs. But I wonder if it's going to be enough. They have a lot of AP behind this Orianna in addition to the zoning potential offered by the Nar and the Lee Sin. Like you said, it just takes all the gold is on all the gold is on Jinx right now. They take her out. They take out that gold advantage. You're right. And just to highlight a little bit onto oh, never mind. We might have to pause. Oh my dead is 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 dead again. Um, so that happened. But revolving back around to the Triforce that you see coming out of Yasuo's, you're seeing a lot of Yasuo's build this Triforce because not only does it give you a much higher uh, movement speed, especially once the Phage starts proccing, but it gives you a little bit more burst as well. And so being able to just stay a little bit more relevant and mix that in with just a little bit more health, it's just a really nice all-around item to help you out because going for the straight Static Shiv into IE or Static Shiv into Bork just doesn't give you the stats that you need to stay alive. This Triforce, which he just got completed, is going to allow him to do so and move himself around. Taking a look at the items from everyone else, you do, like we said, have the Zeke's Herald finished on Tesla Craig, so he's going to be able to help out his Jinx a lot more. The, te the Zeke's Harbinger is almost finished on the side of the Blazing Beamer, so Mr. Voice, who's going to have that up very soon. You've got an item advantage, actually, right now in favor of... Fizzed on her Jace, but that's still not going to be enough to do too, too much for anything right now. Fairly even, fairly around. Again, only 1.5, 1.6k gold. That's not a lot to do. That's not a lot to deal with. So one bad misplay, like getting caught out like this, could ruin everything that Blazing Memers have set themselves ahead for. That rotation coming up top just to pick up North Quad, but he manages to spot them out. Meanwhile, the pings go down around the Baron. Trying to clear that out, maybe set up for a future endeavor and set up. You know what? Let's just take it right now. Oh my god, doesn't have well any armor on him right now, so he doesn't want to tank this for too long. Meanwhile, the attack damage and the attack speed coming out of six elite, taking down this Baron pretty quickly. Oh my god, might go down. That's their smite gone. Can they lock them down? Jinx completely zoned out. This is exactly what they don't want to have in Trent, trying to keep them off of there, but he's gonna go down inevitably. They trade one for two so far, even Baron getting in on the action. Ragnar trying to knock him out. The fight Whoa. is completely split up, but the two piece from the dissonance finds the kill. Can the ball zone the rest of them out? Jinx rotating back. Can she get here in time? Meister Voisu, the great flash. Ragnar going over the wall. This fight is still going on. Auto attack finds the target. Killing spree for Oriana. This Arner Jace on the wrong side of the map. Where are you going? Where can you run? Ace comes in. RV turns that around. Oh my god, baits his team into victory. The execution was for style points, and the ball control from Revelize carried them throughout everything. Again, something we keep mentioning before, all of the gold, all of the resources into Jinx, she got zoned out completely from that fight. They were so focused on getting her, so focused on taking her down, that that allowed Revelize to just move the Orianna ball, get a beautiful double kill, kite them to victory, secure the dragon, and push their lead to about 3.3. They were so worried about Six to lead the entire time. Like, I zoned her, I zoned her. Wait, Oriana kind of hurts a lot too. They just completely Dead. ignore the fact that her ball was right behind them. And then she just ran it right back with a command attack into the dissonance and just instantly deleted two of them. Their awareness was so 
closed minded on everything. But look at this, another hook lands from Tussle right here. The Chrono Break's gonna be able to keep it off. Still though, that's an ultimate missing. I don't know if you wanna do this. Oh, Star Race just running away, running away, running away. No fish gonna get caught with the hook there. Fist under Jason, North Club, both over there. Where's Jinx? Teleport, She's towards teleport. the top side. Can they do anything about it? No, Narbar charge up just yet. He just jumped into death. Oh, the Shockwave! Can they turn this around? Lord Ultra Titan trying to get zoned out, but he's getting chunked by the Oriana Ball. They trade one for one there. Oh my goodness, that could have gone so bad in either direction. The last place you want to be is in a... Uh oh YOLO? YOLO? Well, I mean, what's this game without a Tesla YOLO? It just, it just can't happen. But the worst place that you can be against a team composition that has such good synergy is going to be grouping yourselves up. They did that. The Shockwave lands beautifully. And all this talk about Jinx is slowly getting trumped. Revelize's Oriana play is really starting to take control of this game. And he's doing what it takes to push his team to victory. He doesn't care about a 10-0-4 Jinx. He's doing it his own way. All right, guys. New plan. Kill the Jinx. Slash also killed the Oriana. And North Bob slowly getting those pieces, going for that Infinity Edge third. The Triforce finish a lot more damage behind these 5v1 Yasuo ultimates. Gonna start hurting a lot more in addition to Soresh is getting a little tankier. No effective health to take advantage of that Cinder Hulk passive just yet, however, with the Frozen Heart just done. He's fiending right now. Um, he doesn't have as much as items. Generally, when you're at this point in the game as a, or sorry, as a jungler, you're gonna have a little bit more, but it's just not cutting it. Look at this damage though that North Bob is pulling out right here. Oh, yeah, he's really starting to hurt. Oh, he actually manages to catch it just in time. Oh my God, from the outside, but how much fuel can Lee Sin give? Everybody jumping in. Tesla from the backside. Everybody afraid of Jinx. Ragnar, the main tank, so low on health. Looks like Tyson and Sicily still not done yet. Look at this Jinx taking the front line against an Echo. This Jinx doesn't give a what. 10, 0, and 4 has three items before the 30 minute mark. You know you're in a good mood and as an AD carry who struggles in the current Juggernaut meta, this is the perfect situation and the most ideal life for you. The Master Emote spam gets done, but it doesn't matter. Six Healy is still going to kill you and is still going to wreck your day. I'm sorry, the emote will not stop you from the incoming death. The Blazing Meme. Managed to pick up a little something, stealing that blue buff, giving it over to Storacious. So we gain a little bit of something while they are only behind about one and a half thousand in gold. The fact that this Jinx can just absolutely shred through the little tank items that you have. Well, we saw in the previous fight, Revelize got bursted down so quickly by North Club, and he's not even done with his Infinity Edge yet. The burst from the Sheen procs are just too much for them to handle. Revelize needs to change his positioning, though. If he's going to be doing all this damage, he needs to make sure to stay in the back and try to do something. Quab is up four levels on this. Look, he just doesn't even care about anything right now. The farm and the pressure that he's implying is just way too much. But meanwhile, though... Oh, top lane. Yeah, Meister Voice you're overextending a little bit. The Shockwave lands on a couple. They're kiting back and forth, but they shut down the Jinx. That is oh so important. Getting that extra gold onto their team in addition to taking the main threat out. Revelize really wishing that her friend Jinx was around right now. Jinx is down. Everybody has to move. But look, North Quab is still pushing in this bot lane. He's going to be able to apply a lot of pressure. Dragon is spawning in a minute and a half, but Baron is live. So if he gets the wave manipulated correctly, if he gets this mega wave pushed up exactly where it needs, then that could be an easy Baron because they have a lot of damage. They have a lot of they can take it very quickly so they need to watch exactly where they're going they need to watch exactly what they're doing because if they get caught out of position lazy memers are going to be able to take this and push it ahead especially considering ringnar mostly building damage here you have the effect of health in the giant's belt and the black cleaver but the only resistances on this nars kit is in the form of the merc treads and when north club is becoming this much of a threat I mean, you don't have any armor to absorb that. I mean, the mid laner bought more armor than you. Ringnar is in the classic I want to carry mentality, but meanwhile. Can't carry with that little goal. Nice for Boy who burns that defensively. The synergy with the Yasu rolls off the table now. Oh my god, 1 in 6, but playing like he's 6 in 1 at the moment.
30 seconds on the clock. Oh Just no. Looking for something. They come around from the outside. North Quad doing what he needs to do. Six link cutting back and forth, but the kill does come through. Can they turn this around? Rebel Eyes gets a shockwave, but he's running away now. Everybody's zoned out. BM takes down two, and they're still looking for more. Ragnar, the tank items are not in your pocket. You can't absorb that much damage. And with that done, what do they take next? North Quad carried that entire fight right there. He comes around, hits a two-man tornado. Wasn't enough to insta-burst down Sixilli, but it was enough to get him out of the fight. He ends up flashing to pick up the kill. North Cobb survived that fight. And look at the damage. Look how fast they're going to take Baron. They kill off the members. Two for zero. Sorry, two for one in their favor. They're going to secure Baron as well. They're going to extend their gold lead now to about three and a half K. And it's now the Blazing Memers who take control and put the victory odds in their favor. This is where they start scratching their heads and thinking, uh, guys, didn't I start off 10 and 0? Guys? Team? We talk so much about how it's going to be so important for them to keep Sixily alive in these fights. But we have Oh My God and Ragnar carrying, or, or well, building these sort of carry mentality items in the Black Cleaver, the Frozen Mallet. I mean, Oh My God spent 30 minutes trying to finish that Black Cleaver, just got it done, and it has no tank stats beyond that. A lot of these issues are coming from mistakes that you don't generally see at this level of play. You've got itemization that's a little wonky, and a lot of it is their map rotations as well. When you have an AD carry that's as fed as you have in Sixilli's Jinx, as well as a Jinx, who might I add you, is phenomenal at taking turrets, you need to be able to siege. You have to be able to post up and force these team fights issues. A lot of North American teams really like to focus their fights around the Baron, around the Dragon, because these kind of objectives are what they, these kind of objective fights, should I say, are what they thrive upon. But what they should be doing instead is pushing these towers down, getting the waves going where they need to go, and force the objective, because the team fight prowess that they had at 20 minutes in the game, when, excuse me, Jinx was fed and Revelize was hitting his power spikes, that's the damage that they need, that's the cap, that's the opportunities that they need to capitalize. They weren't able to do so, and now they're having to play on the back foot. North Club. Wow, look at all the damage. That's just one tornado. No armor and an IE by force on the Oswald. Do that. That's like deep for it so deep. Duking back and forth though. When he locks this down, the windwall comes out. Oh, if he jumps on him. Camera ganks me just in time. But meanwhile, everybody in the bot lane, there's only Nar to try and zone them out. The big old crits coming out of Lord Ultra Titan. They finally realize, uh, guys. There's stuff going on, bot and mid. I think we're gonna have to make a rotation sometime soon. Revelize getting jumped on. Oh, they echo. Zanias gets popped, but the last Ayu auto should do it. Tesla gets a shutdown, but Revelize gets dove. Sixly trying to make lemons out of lemonade. Oh, the hook comes from Max Range. But look at them. They're beating on the bot in the hip right now as we speak. But the double kill coming out of Jinx manages to quell that. Meanwhile, top lane, the story has shifted. Oh, they barely gave that inhibitor alive. North Club doesn't have the wave, so he's not gonna have to back out. BM gave up so many kills in that. I'm gonna have to take about 1200 milligrams or aspirin after this because they're all over the place. They have no sense of direction. They have no sense of order. And it's just, it's almost like you're watching a solo queue game at this point because they're moving themselves around. They're barely surviving a lot of these engagements. It's lots of luck that's keeping people alive. North Quad though, I'm not sure if you're gonna be the one that's alive after this. Yeah, North Quad dipping and diving outside of the chickens. Oh, Tesla missing a rare hook there. Oh, it's but he survives. Full yellow queue, not gonna happen there. I'm just waiting like every time a tornado hits I'm just like last breath here last breath there it's like the moments that you know when a resonating strike lands on Lee Sin it's the the inevitable just do it, do just, it. exactly you're thinking it's gonna happen but then when it doesn't you're like well I'm kind of just I'm kind of sad now but then when it does happen you go why did you go in on that <laughs> At the NA uh, Challenger Series Finals, when Crumbs was playing Lee Sin, uh, a bunch of my friends and I were there. Every time Crumbs hit a Lee Sin queue, we were all screaming, do it, do it. It got to the point where even the Renegade staff, knowing it was a bad idea, like uh, Chris Badawi, even when he was screaming, do it, do it, do it. Sometimes you just want to see LCS big plays. Has to happen. Learning five big plays are coming up shortly. The dragon is not up yet. I don't know why they're hovering around. It still has more than two minutes before it, or sorry, more than a minute and a half, should I say, before it decides to spawn. They're gonna deny this blue buff from Revelize. That's really good. Lord Ultra Titan's gonna pick it up. 
Here comes the siege. The inhibitor is open in the bot lane. Nar has TP available. Mega Nar got popped though, so there's going to be a little bit before it's going to be available again. This is their time to push. This is the advantage that they need to capitalize on. Yeah, we saw, given the items at North Club House, just one tornado, one knockup, and that is pretty much the end of the back line. In addition to the BT being finished, being able to absorb so much more after you go in. The longer you keep a Yasuo alive when he's when he's bouncing in and bruising around, the more painful it is for your team. But here they come for the bot wave. Oh my god, coming around from the outside, but I don't think there's a lot he can do. He doesn't have many tank items. Neganar is slowly charging up. It's about halfway done right now. If they want to go in, this is their chance, but Revelize, oh! Getting jumped down there. Oh my god, oh, he's going to use the last res right there. There's two of them going down on behalf of RB. BM have blown the gates wide open. Raynar getting jumped on. No tanks that's here. The exhaust onto the Jinx. They gnar them back. Oh, they're going to pick up a little kill in response right there. Looks like the inhibitor goes down, but I don't think BM are going to be able to pick up what much more in this situation. What a comeback, though. Come back indeed. It's just enough to pry them off right there. The Jinx has so much damage that they still have to be wary of that. Revelize as well did a really good job at maintaining the ball control. Shockwave was not used, was able to move things around. North Quad's ultimates are what all of Blazing Memers are revolving their entire strategy around. When he goes in with the last breath, they're finding ways to capitalize on it. So if they can, if they, meaning if RV can move themselves around and make sure that that last breath does not hit more than one, two at the maximum in the bad situations, every time it gets thrown off, then they're going to find it. You can't have Revelize or Sixilly, or God forbid both of them get knocked off by a last breath because the second that they get chunked down, the second that they get put out of the team fight, they are lost and they're absolutely gone. They did a really good job at picking up one kill at stalling out a little bit, but what happened? The inhibitor still goes down. You've got Dragon spawning in 20 seconds. You've got Baron spawning in 45. This is some chances that they can capitalize, but with inhibitor down, it's going to be Huck. I mean, this is just a completely different story from the, from the way this game started out. In the first 10, 20, 25 minutes of the game, we were seeing the high praises to Sixily getting so fed early on and the team doing exactly what they needed to to make sure that this Jinx was able to put out the damage. But as time goes on, relative gold value shift. You see this Yato get to that ridiculous level. Tesla Craig in the middle of a rock and a hard place and right with Baron's about to come up. That's the last time that you want to go down on behalf of your team. 40 second respawn timer, and they're still not done yet. Double lift out, jumping right in. Oh my god, completely zoned out. Northrop wants it though, looking for the knockup. Does have the stack, manages to flash out of there though, but it looks like he's just gonna flash in. He doesn't care anymore. They're trying to zone him out, but this top end hit under fire soon. Oops. Barely out of range for the last breath right there. They're going to be able to push this up. That's one member down. Oh my god, is just respawned. He's got the home guards. He's coming back to base. Ragnar's getting down a little bit. The ultimate's not available. Oh my god, to push everybody away. Super minions are banking on the Nexus turrets right here. They're there, but you know what? What do we decide to do? BM's just going to back off, BM their way out, and go straight for the Baron. Well, at least Ragnar has the damage to try and kind of clear this wave. Not sure exactly how much a frozen mallet and a black leader will do against a bunch of stacked up super minions, but here they come. Oh my god, gonna be out a lot of mystery skins if he happens to get a miracle steal, but this Baron is going down so quick. Meister Voice who gives up his life of making sure that they get that Baron. So They're gonna important. get it. They're gonna get it secured, but still, this is they got the kill on Meister Voice who that's one less person that you have to Baron. They have to respond to these super minions that's keeping them back. This is why it's so important to get that bot inhibitor out when Baron is on the table because the pressure that it gives you is just exponentially better. Third dragon is going to go down. They're going to get the movement speed boost. Movement speed is the boost. The boost from the dragon. The movement speed buff is going to go down right there in their favor. They're going to spot about a 6k, 6.5k gold lead right now. They're going to buy. They're going to push. This is BM's time to try to push the advantage even further. They have the movement speed buff as well as the Baron. They can do some damage, but now it's going to rely on how they decide to do that. Teleport's available on North Quab. He can split push if necessary. What is RV going to do to respond? I feel like they've gotten to this point where the greedy builds are really biting them in the ass. I mean, when you're at the point in the game where you're relying on other people to make positioning mistakes or just bad decisions, that's not the situation you necessarily want to believe. I mean, you necessarily want to find yourself in. Because North Quab at that position where he's like, you know what? I just have so much damage and so much move speed. You can barely catch me right now. 
Revelai so squishy. Sixily, while they do have the damage, so squishy as well. And Tesla Craig going out toward almost gives up his life there. Diz Daughter Jace is not in the fight yet. They don't need to pick it, even though they've got a lot of damage. Oh, Lord Ultra Titan gets caught out. We'll it's not going to be enough, but that's a shockwave down. He's going to be able to go and life steal himself back up. He's got a little bit. The ultimate comes out from Six Silly. I'm not sure that this is a fight that they want to have right now. Two ultimates are down. This could spell trouble. Definitely, but the Oriana ultimate does come up pretty quickly in max ring, especially with the likely 25-30% CDR that Rebel Life is running. A little time to work with a Ragnar's Meganar timer. He really needs that, considering that in Mininar form, he really, really needs that passive stats in the form of the health, armor, and MR, because he's not building a lot of tank items. North Squad Power is showing that he wants it. blood. He go wants in. blood. Ragnar in the bad situation forces to burn another ultimate defensively. They're jumping all over the Nar. He gets out there. Master Voice who flashes forward, but everybody jukes the Glacial Fissure. This mid tier still under siege, though. And they break through right here. They have a wave at the door. Baron on it. Super Minions trying to are zone. at the Nexus again. This is so close. Zoraish is trying to zone the Nexus. I mean, rather, the inhibitor turret goes down. The rest of them onto the mid inhibitor. This is going to be the last stand for RV. He started off the game so strong. Now they're on the back line. They're on the back feet, rather. They're trying to keep them out of the base. Trying to take advantage of the early game that they had. But Northwalk goes in so hard. And everybody on behalf of RV getting jumped down super low. There's only a couple of people left. Can they turn it back around? Sixily doing what he can. The grits are so big coming out of the jinx. And she manages to find just a little bit more. How long is this game going to stall out jump? I can barely take it. That's Quadra? a quadra kill, by the way. Quadra kill. You know, in the midst of all of this disaster, somehow... <laughs> Out of everything, Six Hill is able to pick up a quadra kill. That's going to just delay the inevitable a little bit longer. Two inhibitors are down right now in favor of Blazing Memers. They're putting them to the test. They're backing them against the wall. This is exactly what they wanted to do. It doesn't matter how strong you think your team fighting carry is. It doesn't matter how strong you think of a team you have. We're just going to go in, balls to the wall. We're going to push against and make you respond and make you find some way to get out of this difficult spot. They're down 6k gold. A fight could still turn around in their direction, but when all your gold is facing onto a Jinx and Jinx is being zoned out by the ever-looming Yasuo, then what do you have left? What do you have left to offer to your team? Nothing. This is the problems that you face when you don't push the advantage early and the AD carry is fed beyond a belief but doesn't have the team sense and it doesn't have the macro strategy to push that little bit of a head into a victory. Man, I ran out of breath like halfway through that fight. And this is going to happen again and again. Remember, this is a best of two series. Is this where I make like a last breath joke of like, was that your last breath in the team Yo, fight or something? Again. Yo, I ran out of breath halfway through that last team fight. I mean, the, it was the last breath that Yasuo did. He hey. threw it, your voice was gone, it's over. I'm freaking the making, boys, it's coming. Oh, freaking the making. Now you just gotta lose a lot of hair. Wow. Just look really old. <laughs> <laughs> just DM your co-casters all the time. I mean, that part's easy enough. I can do that. I'm, I'm, I'm easy to BM. But BM right now, the team, the blazing memes. Oh god, it's too much. It's way too much. The story should get caught out in a bad situation. But they're gonna break back in. They might be looking to turn this North Quap. He's running, he's running, he still wants oh, he's the alive. blood. Oh, he's alive! Oh, is so low! But it looks like the knockup doesn't happen. The last breath is available. Doesn't knock up anybody with it though. So they're using that range advantage to kite down. Ragnar, he does not have flash, but he has to make an R so close. RV, they're looking for blood here. Meister Voisu getting Look tagged up by the Jinx the on the backside. Meanwhile, Lord Ultra Titan in the top lane. He's trying to charge through. He has a wave with them. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to end the game, but they have to divert their attention eventually. Meister Voisu gets taken down by Sixly going legendary for the second time in this game. Yet again, this game getting extended to the point where I'm going to need vocal surgery just like Pyrotechnics. Triple inhibitors down. That's huge right now. You had a little bit of a rough situation. Serratius gets caught as well as Fizz or Jason Voice who going down right there. But if you can secure that third inhib, if you can make things better for you by applying the pressure, then things are good. But Tesla, meanwhile, doing what Tesla does best and dying. Rip Aronis into Pepperonis. I like how that BM played out. It was I think good. he realized halfway through that, you know what, Tesla, I don't think that's really a problem he has. No, unfortunately, that's not happened. Oh my god is going to throw his best 
diversionary tactics to try to get away right now. Northquad is doing everything he can, and so is the team right now. Again, this is such a good job by them to try to do something and alleviate a lot, or not alleviate, to put on a lot of pressure on the side. <laughs> Look at this chase. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pause. I want to see this chase. All the work that go. Tite just did right there. Just Fizz just walked in and was like, all right, you're dead. Can you just like go do Yordle things now? So, taking stock of the situation. Triple inhibitor. Baron up in 10 seconds. Dragon is live. That's gonna be the fourth dragon for Team BM. I mean, if RB manages to hold off yet another push, the three inhibitors down, Baron on all of them. North Club at this ridiculous full build level with the GA on top of them. They gotta kill this dude twice. And while they're trying to kill him, they're having to come to get down on everybody else as well. So that's just like, it's just, I don't know. It's very difficult and it's not a place that you want to be at any point in time. This is the, the worst situation as a league player and as a team that you can be in. Triple inhibitors down. The enemy team has Baron. They're getting fourth dragon. It's not as bad as the horrible worst fifth dragon, but it's still gonna be a bad situation. It's not something you wanna be in. They're having to fight for their lives. There's a chance they can crawl back in it, but it's gonna be slim to none. Slim to none, and if that happens, that's gonna take like, what, another 30 minutes? I don't even wanna... I mean, on it, not really. To be honest, not really, because the damage that you have coming out of Ringnar, as well as the empowered auto attacks from Revelize and Sixilly just doing Jinx things, if they ace them, the timers are long enough that they could just trump down the mid lane and potentially win. Assuming that the wave has something there, there's a chance for it, but it looks like here comes the last stand. They want some blood and they want it now. Yeah, they're forcing it right here. Ringnar, Ringnar does. It did expire right now, so there's not a lot he can do. The Shockwave lands on to four. This might be the turnaround that they need. Ragnar still trying to charge it up, but the cooldown is still going down. Northclub has the GA, so he's going to oh, stay alive for just a little bit longer. The crits are so huge coming out of this Jinx. Double kill for the Jinx. She's excited. She wants even more. Team RV stalling out the inevitable. Look at these death timers jump. 70 seconds for Northclub. He's in the bot lane. Xpeke, is that you? Can he get over there? Can the timer? Toggle over. He's pounding away at the Nexus. He's Tesla gonna do it. Is there. That's it. Right, is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? Oh my god. Team Blazing memes taken in the most spectacular fashion while my voice is cracking all over the place.